Um, okay, so first of all, we're going to start to take the intestinal tract, the rabbit, and break it down. The teeth are the first thing I'm going to talk about, but not much because I could talk about the teeth for half an hour and I think that would be kind of boring. Um, the teeth obviously have to have working teeth that are not causing any pain. They're going to chew down the fiber so it can get where it's going. Um, the mouth is very difficult to access. Anyone who's tried to force read a rabbit, you know, the tiny little mouth in the front. Um, but they have their jaw moves up to 120 times a minute. That's a lot of chewing, and uh, things up there have to be working properly. Okay, we're moving on. So we start with the mouth, the esophagus. Don't see too many problems. Theoretically, we could get uh, bad hay with um, weed pieces in and get stuck in the esophagus. I really haven't seen this much. But some rabbits get sick and go downhill, and we never really know why. So now we get my wonderful artistic skills here. OK, whiteboard. OK, everybody knows kind of what a stomach looks like, right? There. OK. And a rabbit's stomach's really different from our stomach in one way. Our stomach, as you know on Thanksgiving, is very, very distensible. Food goes in. It can really, really stretch. A rabbit's stomach is non-distensible. It's the size that it starts out with. The food goes in, stomach just stays right there. You probably all know that rabbits can't vomit. One of the reasons rabbits can't vomit is that, now your stomach, ours and theirs, has two sphincters. One is up here, one is right there. That's the cardiac sphincter, and this is the pyloric sphincter. In us, our cardiac sphincter is kind of weak. A lot of people have that gastroesophageal reflux disease, and that's because our cardiac sphincter is not great. Everything should be moving this way, and stuff will go the other way. Rabbits have a much more muscular cardiac sphincter, and that's one of the reasons that they can't vomit. Um, their pyloric sphincter, or the, the small intestine that comes off of here, with us it comes off at sort of a normal angle. With rabbits, it apparently comes off at a sharper angle, which also makes stuff kind of stick in the stomach, too. Um, so the fiber goes into here, and it makes what's called a lattice. Okay, it's like, just picture a ball of yarn. So one of the good things about fiber is it makes this ball inside the stomach kind of loose, because you've got fiber and the part of the food that's not fiber, and you have digestive enzymes, and the pH of the stomach is very low. It's almost as low as battery acid. If the fiber is nice and loose, like a loose ball of yarn, all of the digestive enzymes can get into the ball. If you feed pellets, you know, and only pellets and not Bunny Basics tea, you get this big, thick wad, and the digestive enzymes can't get in there. What's also in the ball is hair, because bunnies clean themselves all the time, so it's normal to have a certain amount of fur in the ball. I've read recently that the diagnosis of a fur ball in the stomach as a cause of gastrointestinal distress is probably overdiagnosed, and more time you have insoluble fiber and grass in there instead. If that's in there, and it's too dense, and it can't dissolve, and the rabbit doesn't feel well, and the rabbit doesn't drink enough water, what happens is the ball gets denser and denser and drier and drier, and it really gets stuck there. Um, you can see that on an x-ray sometimes, and unfortunately, sorry, we're low tech here, but you have to picture an x-ray. You have a stomach, it's full of, full of this thing, we'll just move this thing into there, and it, it shrinks, and you get a big gas bubble around some really dense thing that almost looks like a ball. Um, and that definitely is not a fun thing for a rabbit to have. Um, so vomiting is not going to be a symptom that a rabbit can't, is feeling bad, whereas in cats and dogs, one of the first signs that we have intestinal problems is vomiting. Now the food ball always contains hair, so that's normal. It's a question of what is the, um, the balance between hair and fiber and whatnot. Here's an important thing, I'm sure you all have good rabbit savvy veterinarians, but if you go to someone who is not a rabbit savvy veterinarian and they take an x-ray and you say, my rabbit hasn't eaten in three days, and they take an x-ray and they think, this person's full blowny, there's food in the stomach. My rabbit, that rabbit definitely ate. The food does not come out of the stomach. There's always going to be some food in the stomach in x-rays, even in a rabbit who has not eaten in a week. 
partly the pylorus is small, partly it started out as a big lattice filled thing, but I've seen this over and over again. Sometimes it's totally empty, but by then the rabbit's very sick. So that's a common mistake when x-rays are taken, that you see food in the stomach and it really doesn't mean the rabbit is still eating. Um, so basically when a rabbit doesn't eat for whatever reason, you're going to get them dehydrated, the food ball is going to shrink, and they get something called hepatic lipidosis, which is a complicated situation where the liver starts to break down and create toxins in the system. So, um, okay, the other thing that's in the stomach is also the cecotropes, which the rabbit eats from its rear end, like we said, and then goes in and is sitting in the stomach waiting to be digested. Okay, now we're done with the stomach. We're moving on to the small intestine. That's easy, because the small intestine is not very interesting in a rabbit. <laughs> next, next area goes on here. Now in us, the small intestine is a much more important part of our GI tract. You know how they say it's, I don't know, 20 feet long or something like that? Well, in rabbits, it's much shorter. Ours, almost everything, when you see a picture of a human, you know, the, the, the visible human, the intestines are piled on top of each other and there's a lot of small intestine, a lot of digestion and um, uh, immune system uh, support happens in the small intestine. A rabbit small intestine is pretty short because not much is, you know, you do, rabbits have a, um, a pancreas, rabbits have a liver where bile is, you know, pancreas, liver, but we're going to ignore that stuff because everything's going to pass by and all the interesting stuff is going to happen right on that piece of paper. Um, the small intestine is shorter than it is in other animals. It's only about 12% of the volume of the um, uh, intestinal tract in general. It has lymph nodes in it. Lymph nodes are good things, but anyway. And the cecum is 40%, so it's totally huge. Okie doke. Now we're coming down to, actually, I need my own copy of that so I can go over this one. This is, thank you. Okay, this is where all of the interesting stuff is. Well, hopefully interesting. If you want to get oriented, take a look at your picture, and um, you're going to be going, the small intestine goes into the large intestine, and the large intestine is the colon. So that's what's starting at the top of your page, is the colon. The food is going to, um, uh, so you've got the colon on the top, you've got the small intestine under that, and you got the cecum off to the side with the appendix. So the food comes in through the small intestine. If you look close, you've got little tiny dots and you've got little lines. You know, there's dots and slashes, I guess. The dots are the non-fiber food that comes down. So everything's all mixed together when it comes down. The rabbit's been eating hay or all the good stuff you feed them. And it follows the arrow and it comes to what's called the ilio because that's the ileum, the small intestine of the ileum, ilio secocolic junction. Okay, so we go from A to B. So everything dumps in both in two directions. It goes in, in two directions into the colon and into the cecum. And it's all mixed up, the small stuff and the big stuff. C is a enlargement of the colon. Okay, so that little C, that's a um, that's a blow up of the first part of the colon. So in us, everything is gonna be heading out and turned into fecal material. In rabbits, it starts to head out, but then the colon says, wait a minute, I want another chance at that stuff. So these things called the hostra, see how all the little tiny dots go up into the, the top part? And the straight things, the straight things are the fiber that's not dissolved. So what's happening is you've got it going in two different directions. I mean, it's like, I don't even know how this works, but it does work. So what you have is you have those loops kind of squishing, the fibers going this way, and the small <coughs> dissolvable stuff is going the other way, back into the cecum. I bet you never thought fiber could be so complicated. <coughs> um, and I have, you know, you have to look at this, kind of say, what direction is it going? So see, is everybody following me mm -hmm. so far? Where's it all going? All right. So what happens is the fiber, the little straight things, is going to head right on out the colon and turn into the bouncy little dry poop that we see all day long. So it just separates out. It's almost like it falls. In fact, although it looks in this picture like it's falling to the bottom, the fiber is actually lighter than the other stuff. So it goes on out and turns into the bouncy poops. The other stuff, the dissolvable 
non-fibrous material, goes back into the cecum where it spends time involved in a bacterial involved process. Now that part, there are multiple different bacteria that live in there, there are yeasts, and they're all supposed to be there. Their digestion takes place not with the uh, enzymes that we have, like the enzymes that come from the pancreas, they have these bacteria living there that have to be in perfect balance for everything to work properly. So that's why, we'll talk a little while, what happens when it doesn't work properly. So it's back in there and it goes through a system where bacteria help to break down pieces of the, uh, the fiber. Some fiber is soluble and some fiber is insoluble. Plants, our system is not that well designed to break down plants. The plant wall is very, very tough, whereas if we eat us meat eaters, meat is easier to digest. Plants take a harder, harder line on us too. So in the cecum, this process goes on and it gets a chance to recycle. So once it's done doing its thing, what do you have? Well, you have a cecotrope. And what a cecotrope is, is a sack of partially digested food material covered by mucus. So we look at a secret, we bought, everybody seen their bedding <laughs> secretropes? Okay. You kind of look, it's poop, right? You know, you think it's poop. That poop, we don't even want to be seeing those secretropes because we want the rabbit to be eating them directly from its anus and have it recycle back in. So secretropes that end up plastered all over your bunny's hiney are not good to have because they're not going back inside the bunny. Every cecotrope that does not end up in the rabbit is wasted. And that was a lot of work on the rabbit's part to digest that and then have it be lost. Um, so it's the microbes, the bacteria that are doing the work. They digest starch and fiber and they create those soft feces and you know what, what, all, of those, what all of those are. Um, so at the end you have the voila moment in D, where I should have drawn a little secret trope. You know, they're kind of cute. What I really love <laughs> in, in, a, in a book, you ready for this? Some author described them as small, soft, and sweet smelling. Oh, I just thought, I don't know about that. I, 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 I've picked a lot of secret tropes off rabbits in my day, and I can't say sweet smelling was the thought that I had. So the outer side of it, I mean, it just looks like one big thing, but that's all mucus. And if anyone's had them stuck to their rabbits or red, to me, it's like super glue. It's just unbelievable when it dries. Um, but the rabbit eats it again, and that mucus is so tough that the battery acid pH of the rabbit's stomach, it takes almost six hours for it to break down the mucus and dissolve the cecotrope which then is available as nutrition. It's no longer a cecotrope, it's now something that the rabbit can absorb through its uh, small intestine. It contains vitamins B and K and has um, protein and the nutrition that the rabbit is trying to recycle. And of course, we all know they eat directly from the anus. If you try to tell a brand new rabbit owner this, it's like, especially if there's kids in the room, yeah. it's just really, you know, they just don't really want them to do it. I don't see too many rabbits living on wire anymore wire floors, but once in a while someone will come in and obviously, I think most rabbits still get it before it hits the wire floor, but the concept obviously is not good for their feet either. Um, so they're going to be, again, what's a secret trope do? It's redigestion. They're absorbing previously undigested nutrients, re-inoculating the gut with essential nutrients, and uh, so it's going through the intestinal tract two times in 24 hours. I mean, pretty cool. Okay, well, I think so anyway. And don't forget fiber is going to be making peristalsis work. It's gonna create a better lattice in the stomach and prevent obesity, sludge, bladder stones, and gastric stasis, which we'll talk uh, about in a minute. Um, okay, I think I'm gonna just ask if there's any questions at this